In this session, we'll start chapter number 11, Network Examples and Protocols. We have heard this word protocol in the previous chapter, isn't it? So, protocols is nothing but set of rules and regulations. The word protocol refers to set of rules and regulations. Okay. So, when two systems communicate, there should be some set of standard set of rules and regulations. For example, each one of us have different uh, brands of mobiles and over the over with the mana mobile phone use pandro, smartphones use pandro, chilaper iPhones use pandro, it differs. And at the same time, each one has different configuration. Brand matola, mobile brands matome differ, ahala, there are different set of configurations as well. And uh, another thing is that each one of us use different ISPs, internet service providers, Geo, Vodafone, Airtel, and so on. So there should be some standard that supports all these differences. If you have varieties of mobile phones, varieties of devices, all device ko standard way of communicating data. Message or apart from all these differences, it must be delivered. You, they have to follow certain rules and regulations while uh, uh, transferring messages from one device to another device in a network. We learned this word, right? network, isn't it? When more number of uh, devices are connected together, then they are called as a network, whether it is a laptop, PC, mobile phones, tablets, etc. Tabs, etc. Okay. So, uh, there are some standards, rules and regulations to be followed when transferring data, images, video, audio, etc. Everything comes in the data from one device to another device. Okay, and such rules are called as protocols. And there are different types of protocols, but they have highlighted at the first one protocol, TCP IP. Okay, so first it was referred as IP, proto IP Internet Protocol. So it is the protocol that is used for communications for layering data gram across boundaries of other networks or network in the no network. I may use uh, Geo, you may use Vodafone, but when I send messages from my mobile to yours, it, it is delivered and you are able to see it, isn't it? I may have a different configuration, different mobile brand, I may have a different laptop, but when I send messages, when I send mails, it is received at the other end, irrespective of whatever device you use. And uh, this is accomplished using this protocol. Okay, so what is a datagram? In the previous session, I told you TCP IP divides your message into small, small packets. Mulu message is in the dedicated line. It is divided into small, small packets and it is routed so that it goes to the end easily. Kadaisila poi destination la se rapa easy apoi sendro. Receiving end la thirman the packet cell name van the chain the ore message a deliver agumas on a last session la. So na so na it is divided into small, small packets and the packets ra in and solrangana data gram and solrang. So a message is divided into small datagrams. This is a new technical term for you. Okay. So a datagram you can underline in the PDF book. Datagram refers to the packets in the packet switching network. So your message is divided into small small packets and it is routed to the destination. Okay. So the word that is used for the small small packets is datagram. And uh, this picture shows you how TCP IP works. Look at uh, step one. So uh, a sender sends a data. The TCP protocol it breaks the data into packets. Packets nine on a data gram sunchana. Okay. And step two, the pack the packets, different packets travel over different routes to the recipient destination. Okay, step three. Again, they also use TCP IP protocol, isn't it? They reassemble, look at the word reassemble, through the Tanitani packet sound the correct arrangement or message they deliver it to the recipient. This is how TCP IP works. Okay. Next one is the pro definition for this protocol. So protocol is the usual procedures, rules, formal standards, 
and policies that contains many standards to allocate communication communication na endu vidhamana communication venal irukala chat to messages text messages or images video audio anything that you send between devices which are connected to the network so this is the exact definition for protocol so this ip protocol uh, will deliver from source to destination okay tcp ip protocol will help you to deliver data from source to destination so source and destination you eppadi kandupidikkom so enga anupano do you give the number do you give the mail id adu enga irukku nadu kandupidichu pananano illaya so for that it uses a unique ip address even your mobile phone has a ip address unique ip address okay so this like a door number okay we take our door number unique car only to you have an address so that your uh, house is easily identified similarly if you look at a global network la each device has a unique ip address okay look at the ip addresses in the picture given below it will be a four part address each one comprising of numbers from 0 to 255 we will learn this in detail later okay this is just an introduction given here and uh, this a uh, concept of dividing packets into packets was introduced by wind chef and bob kane in 1974 you can look at this data in the textbook and underline up in the pdf of course so wind chef and bob kane introduced this ip co- concept uh, datagram concept in 1974 and it was it was famously now called as tcp ip transmission control protocol internet protocol okay so all requirements which combine process on network protocols to carry out the communication between routers servers computers laptop or any device that is networked okay and uh, there are different types of uh, network protocols look at the screen there are different types of network protocols you have heard of https isn't it http https when you browse websites uh, you will get this protocol even though you write www.google.com check after you press enter key you will have a protocol http colon slash slash www.google.com nowadays it is all secure look at the second one http secure https so http and tcp ip are the basic protocols for network communications and then to make it more secure like when you do transactions either the websites la online shopping sites la supposing if you want to uh, buy something and you want to pay online uh, if the site does not have this https do not pay it online okay by your data may be hacked so only websites uh, that has this protocol https Yes, stands for secure. Okay, uh, you can uh, do online transactions securely. Otherwise, there may be frauds. So, do not make any online transactions if the website does not have HTTP. Yes, only HTTP. If they have, do not do online transactions. This is just a suggestion. And then there are uh, many other protocols given here: SFTP, Secured File Transfer Protocol, Secured Sockets Layer. You will learn all this in detail later. so next one is network management protocol so to manage the traffic you have icmp internet control message protocol and simple network management protocols all these protocols are uh, given in your textbook you can learn these types of protocols okay so network uh, security protocols are used to implement uh, security okay to for security purposes and for network maintenance we have the third set of protocols network management protocols so with this uh, an introduction about protocols gets over so protocol is nothing but a set of rules and procedures that are to be followed when data is transferred from one device to another device and the devices if they identify pano each one has a unique ip address okay and um, who gave this idea concept of dividing the messages into small small packets called datagrams it was wind surf and bob can in 1974 now we will move on to the next topic internet intranet and extranet you have you have heard this word internet quite familiar and quite famous now so internet shortly called as net it is a worldwide system of networks 
so it's a network of many small small networks so if you have the mail id of another person you can transfer messages to another person okay so if you have permissions you can do so so the internet is a network of global connections here global refers to the world okay so global connections that comprises of small small networks private public networks business organizations academic institutions government and organizations they are all connected together as in the whole world isn't it they can be connected either wired or wireless wired means mostly nowadays we use fiber optic cables as they transmit data at a faster rate and wireless also transmits data at a faster rate so internet ku or basic abdin sonna it was arpanet that we saw in the previous lesson arpanet advanced research projects agency network so it was by the us government in 1969 it was the first network okay so the unique aim was to generate a network so that would allow users to do some research from university and talk to persons on another research universities okay so there are few terms that we often use in internet one is internet another one is www so what is the difference between internet and www of course they are uh, both though they look same they are actually different internet refers to the network that includes your hardware your, your infrastructure and all that your specification and all that it includes all the whereas this www world wide web it refers to only one service or a group of services it can be said as a group of services that are connected using internet so only when you have an internet connection you can go to chrome a uh, chrome and type it as www.google.com you request the service of google search engine okay you request the service of google search engine by typing the website address okay so this uh, information on internet is saved under www okay world wide web though internet and world wide web seems to be same they are actually different internet refers to the uh, infrastructure the hardware whereas web the www it refers to the software the services in which that contain your data in the form of websites okay so they both are different and this has to be learned for two mark question so now you have a concept of what is internet it's a global network now we will move on to the next two concepts one is intranet intranet is a network within a company so a company can uh, use uh, a network can have uh, only systems connected within the company it cannot be used uh, outside the company for example in our school we have a server and we can access the server within the network of the school once we come out of the school we cannot log in into the server and take files from it so it is a closed network that can be accessed only within the company and it is called as a intranet so it is a private network with an enterprise to share the data and resources between the employees so when i give you some demo i take it from the server isn't it and i show it uh, as a demo in the classroom so the server is located somewhere else and i'm using the files in the server and giving you demo in the classroom so, but i cannot take the same file once i come out of the school because it is a closed network that can be accessed only within the school so the such type of networks are called as intranet usually it is a local area network interlinked local area network so it includes connections through one or more gateways so gateways are nothing but it connects two networks using different protocols it is called, called this also called as protocol converters okay so there are uh, i'll show you what is a gateway router and all that we'll learn it in detail just an introduction is given in this lesson okay so now we have learned two main topics one is internet and the other one is intranet okay so internet is a global worldwide network whereas intranet is a closed network closed uh, uh, group of computers uh, that share data within a particular organization okay now we'll move on to the third topic and it is extranet 
So supposing if the company shares its network with only few customers or suppliers, uh, then it is called as external. So apart from the uh, company, uh, there are many other uh, people who can access it. Okay. So such uh, ne such a network is called as an extranet. So apart from people who are working in the company, others can also access the network and such networks are called as extranets. Now we shall see a sh short difference between internet, intranet and extranet. Internet is a global network. All networks use TCP IP protocol, okay, transmission control and internet protocol. But internet is a global network. An example is sending mail to a friend who is anywhere in the world. It will reach it, okay. And then intranet is a network that is restricted within the members of an organization. School use like accessing your records, your students' records, or in any company accessing the records of the employees, okay. And then employee personals personal means people who are those who are working in the company and then extranet means it is also a tcp ip network but with restricted members very restricted access to members outside the organization for example checking availability of inventory from an outside supplier an outside supplier can check the uh, inventory stock and uh, of the company and he can access the network such networks are called extranet okay so now I want to show you a picture. This shows an, ex an example for internet, extranet and intranet. Okay, internet is global. Whereas intranet, look at the inner circle. Then it is only restricted to employers. Look at the second outer circle. It is extranet so that the network is extended to customers, suppliers, uh, partners and other marketers. Okay. Now I want to uh, show you this uh, network applications, applications of internet, applications of intranet and applications of extranet. So when we use internet, we can download programs and files. You use social media, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Insta and so on, email, e-banking, etc., e-governance, chatting, etc. Whereas intranet, intranet within a company, within a school, etc. So there are some rules and regulations which they can share it with others. You can access employee database, you can send circulars, uh, you can uh, create reports on data given, etc. Applications of extranet is other customer communications. If supposing a, a customer is very important and we give them access, you can have communications with them, you can have online discussions. Online education and training nowadays we provide LMS to you students, isn't it? It is an extra net. It's not a closed network that can be accessed inside the school, but you people also can access it, but not everyone in the world. Only so only you are given rights to access our LMS network. Okay, server. Okay. Such uh, examples come under extranet. So supply chain management, warranty registrations, claims. When you make uh, insurance claims and all that, it is for specific customers, uh, those who belong to that particular company. Okay, so if the network is extended to only few people that are related to the company, then it is called extranet. Okay, only within the company it is intranet. If it is available for all around the world, then it is called as internet. You must also learn these applications of internet, intranet, and extranet.